Joseph Schooling fails to advance in the 100 meters freestyle, but all is not lost just yet. Better news in table tennis, Yu Meng Yu smashing her way into the last eight in the women's singles. And in a huge shock for gymnastics fans, Olympic champion Simone Biles is out of the team final for the USA. This is the Straits Times News Night. Good evening, I'm Chao Suen. Joseph Schooling says he's just glad to get the first one out of the way. Racing for the first time in the Tokyo Olympics, the Singapore swim star finished sixth in the 100-meter freestyle heats. Clocking 49.84 seconds this evening, he was more than two seconds slower than the fastest qualifier, Italy's Thomas Ciccone, who led the field with a time of 47.71 seconds. And that means schooling will not be going further in the competition after failing to qualify as one of the top 16 swimmers. But what's next for the 26-year-old? Well, he'll be turning his focus to the 100 meters fly and the defense of his crown starting on Thursday. I've just exited the mixed media zone where we just spoke to uh, Joseph Schooling after his 100 meter freestyle race. Uh, he didn't have a particularly good race. He clocked 49.84 seconds and placed six in his heat uh, and did not make the cut for the semi-finals. Uh, in fact, the time was a second and a half behind his national record and personal best, which he clocked at the Rio Olympics in 2016. Despite this, he was actually very positive. He was all smiles throughout the five or six minutes that he was speaking to the Singapore media. And he said he's happy to get into the competition pool in Tokyo. And he's really, really looking forward to his 100 meter fly title defense on Thursday night. He said he and coach Sergio Lopez have been placing a strong emphasis on his butterfly event in training and competitions. So he really did not know how he would fare in the freestyle. Uh, he wasn't too happy with his time, but he said uh, he was uh, pleased by his overall performance. We'll have more on the Olympics a little later, including the first ever medals in surfing. Now in other local news tonight, new details on how the River Valley High School tragedy unfolded on July 19th, when a Secondary 4 student at River Valley High School allegedly killed a Secondary 1 student on campus. Speaking in Parliament today, Education Minister Chan Chun Singh outlined the chain of events, adding that not all information can be shared as the case is now before the court. At about 11.35 a.m., a group of students encountered the Secondary 4 student outside a toilet. He asked them to call the police. A teacher arrived at the scene and told the student to put down the X. He complies and is escorted away. Police and SCDF find a Secondary 1 student lying motionless in the toilet. He was pronounced dead. Now, due to the greater-than-expected disruption caused by the Delta variant of the coronavirus, the Ministry of Education is especially concerned for the graduating cohorts. And to help take some pressure off, students taking the O, N and A levels this year will not be tested on some topics covered towards the end of their syllabus. Education Minister Chan Chun Singh said all other students will also have the scope of their year-end exams reduced. And for the second year in a row, common last topics will be removed from the PSLE. And a 17-year-old has died after a basketball backboard structure in Badok fell on him on Monday night. The boy, who ST understands to be a student at the Institute of Technical Education, was unconscious when conveyed to the hospital, where he subsequently died from his injuries. The police said they were called at about 8.45pm and found the injured teen next to the fallen structure near Block 18 Badok South Road. They are investigating the case of unnatural death. East Coast Town Council said it has closed the basketball court with immediate effect and will conduct a thorough check on the integrity of all the structures there. Now, taking a look at the COVID-19 daily numbers, 139 cases were confirmed today, 136 locally transmitted and 3 imported. Of the local infections, 81 are linked to previous cases and 55 are currently unlinked. Meanwhile, 3 cases have so far been linked to Apex Medical Centre, a GP's clinic at Jurong West Street 92. The clinic was closed today with a notice saying that staff will be under quarantine until August 5th. It's one of 10 new clusters announced Monday night, bringing the total number of active clusters here to 35, the highest number in the past month. So we see that there are new clusters emerging daily. 
And that is very much a sign that the virus is still going about in our community. And because we have more and more people vaccinated now, some of these people may be infected, but because they have no symptoms or they have very mild symptoms, they themselves may not even know that they are infected and they still move about outside home. And this is the reason why we continue to see new clusters and also new unlinked cases as well. In a huge shock to gymnastics fans all around the world, Simone Biles has pulled out of the Olympic team final. The 24-year-old American was withdrawn from the lineup moments after her vote in the opening minutes of the team competition. It was later confirmed that it was due to a medical issue, and she will be assessed daily to determine medical clearance for future competitions. The team event was her first chance of adding to her medal collection of four golds and a bronze from the Rio Games. Just a day before, she posted this message on Instagram, saying, I truly do feel like I have the weight of the world on my shoulders at times. I know I brush it off and make it seem like pressure doesn't affect me, but damn, sometimes it's hard. And showing incredible grit and determination, Singapore's Yu Meng Yu is through to the quarterfinals of the women's singles in table tennis after playing two matches in a day. And she'll be hoping to go one better this year than her final eight appearance in Rio in 2016. Earlier this morning, Yu smashed her way into victory against the higher-ranked Taiwanese Cheng Ai Ching. And this evening, she continued her winning form, beating Liu Juan of the United States. The 31-year-old will meet Japan's world number 10, Kasumi Ishikawa, on Wednesday. And also in action today, Singaporean badminton player Yo Jia Min showed no signs of nerves on her Olympic debut, making light work of her Mexican opponent. The 22-year-old world number 30 won in straight sets in 25 minutes in her singles Group K opener. Next up, it's South Korea's world number 18 Kim ga Yoon on Wednesday. And finally, making waves at the Olympics today, thanks to an approaching typhoon, surfers had to complete the quarterfinals, semifinals and gold medal matches all in one day. When all was said and done, Carissa Moore of the United States made history as the first woman to win an Olympic gold medal in surfing. The four-time world champion was the favourite going into the competition. In the men's competition, Italo Ferreira of Brazil came out on top despite being swallowed by a wave after a big drop in the opening minute of the men's final. The 2019 world champion saying that it was a long day, but a dream come true. And that wraps up the Straits Times News Night. Do visit straitstimes.com to see more news and videos. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel by hitting the button below. Keep safe and I'll see you tomorrow.